Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome. Uh, another day, another Saturday, uh, a day to rejoice in. And uh, we're in this period of time between when Jesus rose from the dead and ascended into heaven and when the promised Holy Spirit is sent. And uh, thinking about what, what, what they did during that period of time. We need to engage our imagination, not to go beyond what the scriptures tell us, but to try and fill in the gaps and say, what did they do? There are some verses that tell us something about what they did. Um, I mean, my, my um, inquiring mind says, uh, where did they live for the 40 days after Jesus rose from the dead? Where did they live? And it's quite evident that they didn't go out and about talking about the resurrection of Jesus. Um, there's no evidence that anyone knew anything about it. There is evidence, we are told, that the uh, chief priests uh, uh, told the soldiers to say that the disciples had stolen the body away um, while they were asleep and bribed them and gave them money to say that and that that was said. But there's no evidence that it was said until <coughs> the disciples started to talk about the resurrection and and they hadn't and they didn't and this is a great puzzle to me you know this most momentous amazing thing had happened that had never happened before this man had come back to life after being crucified this this <coughs> yes we know he raised lazarus from the dead um and here he is himself back from the dead when lazarus was raised from the dead everybody knew about it Everybody wanted to see Lazarus. They flocked to Bethany and it was difficult. Um, and, and the Jews even plotted to kill Lazarus because um, the fact that he was walking around alive when everyone knew he'd been dead for four days uh, was a huge, had a huge impact on people. But there's no, no account anywhere of any impact of the resurrection of Jesus immediately after it happened. This is a great puzzle to me. It's something to ponder. You know, why? Why Jesus who went about telling everybody about the kingdom of God, telling everybody about how to know the Father and how to get right with God and how to live and all the things that he did. He's died. He's risen. He's broken the bonds of death. He's defeated the enemy. And everything's gone silent. It's really strange to me. Why didn't he go to Pilate and say, here you are, guy, it's okay. Okay, you, you put an innocent man on the cross, but here I am. It's okay. You don't have to carry the burden of it the rest of your life. He didn't go to Pilate. He didn't go to Pilate's wife, who'd been so worried about her husband condemning an innocent man. He didn't go to Caesar and change the world. He didn't go to Caiaphas and Ananias and the Sanhedrin. He could easily have appeared just as he appeared in the upper room to the disciples. He could have gone to the Sanhedrin and presented himself to them alive. Irrefutable proof that he was and is the Son of God. He didn't do it. He didn't go up to Galilee or to Capernaum where he had lived so much of his life. He didn't go to his hometown of Nazareth and show the people who had said, oh, we know who he is. We know where he comes from. We know his mom and his dad and his brothers and sisters. We know everything about this man. He's just a carpenter. He's he's a he's, he's a charlatan. It's it's all trickery. It, it, it's no. And those who said, "Can anything good come out of Nazareth? A little pokey little town in the north of the country where they've got an accent." God wouldn't send his son from Nazareth. He didn't go to any of these people. He didn't even go to to Nicodemus. And say, here I am. I suspect Nicodemus was there in this company that were gathered in the upper room. And he knew about the resurrection. But we have no evidence that Jesus specifically appeared to Nicodemus. But, so th that is a big question. That is my thought for the day. And that is how amazingly gracious God is to us. He does not force anything on anybody. He respects the autonomy and the free will that he has given to us enormously. 
which is why when we pray so hard for our loved ones and for people we think a lot of and, and we're very fond of to know what we know about Jesus and to come to faith it seems to take forever for them to do that why because God will not force them into the kingdom however much we want them in he will not push them ill in he will not make demands on them he will not he will woo them the holy spirit is constantly working jesus told his disciples that he was convincing the world of the truths of the gospel the holy spirit is there nudging wooing the hound of heaven follows people wherever they are he 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 prodded paul who was first, first known as Saul, he prodded Saul all the time with things that said to him, you're wrong, you're wrong to fight this faith. You're wrong to fight Jesus. This is where the truth lies. And eventually he gave into it. But God did not force his resurrection truth on any of the people who had not already believed in him. Now that, that is incredible to me. That is a very deep thought. I know there are those exceptions, and there are exceptions. Paul was an exception. He had all that prodding, but eventually he had the vision from God when he was ready to turn to Jesus. And there are people who, having had uh, nudges towards the kingdom, God will do something miraculous and win them over. But still, the choice is always theirs. And as it is with us, the choice is always ours as to whether we will follow Jesus. If Jesus has, has meant anything to you, if the things I've been talking about over these weeks <laughs> and, uh, and months now, do you realise how many I've done of these? It's nearly 65, I think, since lockdown, since I started on the 19th of March. I've been putting little thoughts together every day to encourage you that the faith that we have is worth everything in our lives. The fact that Jesus died and our sins are forgiven. Every one of them, whatever they are, completely forgiven. That death has changed forever because he broke death and he defeated death. So when we die, it's simply moving from this life into the kingdom of God in the presence of God himself. Death is changed forever because Jesus died and broke the power of death. And resurrection, Jesus rose and he ascended and he took into heaven a human body. And forever, humanity has been raised to a new height that it never had before, that it lost because of the Garden Eden, of Eden events. And Jesus has restored everything. And... Uh, he is worth spending your life serving and loving because he first loved you. He loved you when there was nothing about you that was lovable. When you were thoroughly ghastly and horrible and evil, when you had no good thought in your head, he loved you enough to die for you. Well, there's enough thinking for today and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.